rollers, the pickup rollers, and the transfer rollers, uh, there's plenty of rubber rollers on these machines that move the paper from one place to another. And if you're getting jams in your machine, chances are that one of these rollers um, are either too slick or just not performing correctly and probably causing you a lot of headaches. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to clean those rollers and give you an idea of where those ro rollers are located throughout the machine. Now I'm not going to show you all of them. Some of them are very difficult to get to. So we're just going to go through the most common and probably the ones that are going to fix the issue uh, first and foremost. So first thing, uh, what I have is a nice soft cloth. It's lint free, dust free. And then I also have my can of WD-40, okay? Some people are going to tell you that uh, you should never clean the rollers with WD-40. You should clean it with some other solution or maybe just water. Um, WD-40, I use it because it is oil-based and it is going to soak into that rubber. It's going to lubricate, moisturize the rubber, and obviously it's a natural cleaner as well. Some people may tell you that you should use more of a rubber rejuvenator like Fedron. You can do that. Fedron uh, does work very well, but Fedron also kind of strips away that top layer of rubber, so you are actually degrading the rubber uh, even further. So once in a while, I think that would be fine. I do use it on occasion, but WD-40 is my preferred method. So that's what I'm gonna use. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the paper feed kit. Now this kit, I do have a video on my site that shows exactly how to take these out. They're very simple, and they come out of the front of the machine. There's usually, or there's always two of them in the front, but you may also have a high capacity drawer at the bottom. This particular machine does not but it has a different paper feed system that won't come out as easily as these other ones but uh, you can still access it pretty easily just by opening the drawer and kind of sticking your head down in there but in this case we're gonna look at these or this paper feed system and this is the pickup roller you can see it kind of pivots and it picks up the machine or picks up the paper feeds it through these separator rollers and to make sure you're only getting one sheet of paper at a time and then it feeds it through the rest of the system. Again, what you want to do is just put a little bit of WD-40 on the edge of a cloth. Make sure that you clean all these. You can see that these are kind of dusty. You can also see that they kind of have a fingerprint pattern on them, and that's good. These are worn just a little bit, but they probably still have quite a bit of life left in them after we clean them. Uh, what that does is that actually grips the paper and, and pulls it in the direction it needs to go. So if you see that what kind of looks like cracking but it's not it's it's just like a fingerprint roughness to it again after you make sh make sure you clean these really nice and good once you have them clean let them sit for just a few seconds and then take another part of the cloth the dry portion and wipe off any excess uh, oil or WD-40 that you have in there if you put this right back in the machine and try to do a test print, you're going to get some oil smudges on your paper. So you want to make sure that those are dry after you've cleaned them. And I would also recommend just letting it sit for maybe a half an hour or so after you've reinstalled it before you print anything, just to give it a chance to really dry. So that's the paper feed system. That's going to be one of the most common things that could go wrong. But then on the side of the machine, there's a little door, trap door here on the side. If we pull that down and we look, we got some feed rollers here. There's two of them. Those can also be wiped down with some WD-40. Those are going to be smoother rollers. They don't have that grippiness because those are just feeding it through the system. But if those get real, real slick, then they're not going to push the paper where it needs to be. So you got two there. And then over here, if we put the bypass tray down, we also have a pickup roller right here for the bypass tray. Now this one's not as important if you don't ever use the bypass tray because this only feeds the paper from the tray into the system. So if you don't ever use it, you probably don't really need to uh, clean that one. But then we can open up this other door on the side and you can see we have two rubber rollers right here. These are again some feed rollers that are pushing it up into the fuser and, and through the transfer belt area. Uh, those can be cleaned and again those are smooth and they're supposed to be smooth and then we also have a pressure roller here we actually have two of them there's a black one and a gray one now the black one you just want to wipe that down with a dry cloth 
you don't want to really put any WD-40 or any moisture on this one. But the gray one you can. This is a pressure roller as well. But you can clean that up. It's not as important for this one to be super, super clean because this is just putting pressure on the paper. But I like to clean it just to make sure there's no smudges or anything like that. From that point, I'm going to jump over to the duplex unit. And I've taken this off the machine to get access to all the other ones. But if you open up the duplex unit, there's actually six rollers, one right across the center here. You have two over here, and then you also have two over here. Make sure those are clean as well. But again, since this is the duplex, this is only going to help for the two-sided printing. These rollers are not in use for just standard printing. So depending on your usage and what sort of printing you do, this could be beneficial or it could just be a waste of time. Okay, next we're going to look at the top automatic document feeder. This one has a lot of rollers in it as well, and if you use this quite a bit, you've probably had a jam or two over the years, and uh, it's important to keep these clean and lubricated as well. So if we open up the top, first thing is your pickup roller. This one should be rough, just like the ones that we saw down below. Uh, you want to make sure it still has that roughness to it. We want to clean this one, and then we also have another one right behind it. It's a little bit more difficult to see um, but and get to, but you can uh, clean that one as well. That one should also be rough. Then we have some feed rollers here. There's three black ones. You can get better access if you just lift this one up. And then you can also see six small gray feed rollers as well. Those can also be uh, cleaned with that WD-40. These are uh, really hard to move on your own, but if you come over here and just move this green wheel, they actually turn for you. That's important on the top. Now I'm going to lift it up and show you some more. If we lift up the document feeder, this little green tab here at the top, you can actually pull this down. Now it's spring-loaded, so you kind of have to hold it there, but you have three rollers here on the side. And then you also have three rollers here underneath. Those ones that are underneath need to be turned with that green wheel that I just showed you. They're kind of hard to, uh, to move on your own. Okay, so that's a quick rundown on the most common rollers, uh, both the pickup rollers, the feed rollers, the transfer rollers, everything like that that's going to cause jams in your machine. Now again, like I said, there are a lot more rollers in these machines. Um, but they are more difficult to get to and it would require disassembling the machine even further. Average person, I would say that these rollers that I just showed you are going to be your best solution to some of the most common jamming problems. And I should also mention, if you ever come across uh, one of these rollers that is supposed to be kind of rough like that, but you notice that it's kind of glossed over, kind of gotten hard, or just gotten really smooth, what you can do, and this is only a temporary fix or a quick fix, but you can take one of these classic sponges, use the green side, the rough side, and lightly scrub all around the roller. What that's going to do is just kind of rough up the, the rubber a little bit and give it a little bit more gripping power. Again, this is a very quick solution. I don't recommend it on an ongoing basis. These rollers are not very expensive. You can get the whole kit to replace these uh, brand new for I think around 20 bucks, so it's not that bad. Um, but if you're in a bind and uh, you can't wait for those to ship and get to you, then you can just use one of these sponges. I just have to stress, just be very careful. So I hope this helped. Thanks for watching.